Wow, I'm not needed here today because uh, already so many good things have been said. So my name is Stefan. So I work in a company called Nokia, and I guess everybody knows uh, Nokia. And nowadays we are very much focused on making network equipment. Um, but also we are a company that believes that technology should do more. So technology should do something for people, and it should make people's lives better. And one of these areas where we think that we can do that with is this what we call create a programmable world. And that connects quite nicely to 5G. And 5G, we think, will enable us to do more. And there is a reason why we think it's different than the earlier technologies, than LTE and 3G. Because if you look to the past technologies, typically there is some kind of um, invention behind it, right? So we, we decided to develop LTE because somebody invented a technology called OFDM. And OFDM, we thought, hey, wow, if we build base stations using this, then we can have a fantastic capacity and much higher throughput. But we didn't think, why are we actually doing this? And I think that's the difference with 5G. So when people set out, or when this industry set out to think, what's 5G? Actually, people start to think, what do we want to achieve? Is it just more throughput, or is it something else? So and then the conclusion was, well, 5G should do something to create a network society. Right? So we want to digitize everything and everybody. So and that was then the starting point, how 5G was defined. And then the technology flow basically comes after that. So if you want to do this, yes, we need millimeter waves, we need more spectrum, and so on. But the purpose of 5G was kind of the lead for defining the technology. And that's why we think that 5G also will have a much bigger impact than the earlier technologies. So then, if we want to benefit from this impact, I guess there's a few things. So the ecosystem changes. So in the past, it was about the handset suppliers, my colleagues, the operators, and ourselves. But now, of course, if 5G is a tool to um, modernize verticals, to look at public sector, we need to bring in these parties. And still, as of today, of course, we talk to automotive, we talk to healthcare, but we don't yet have a very good structure how we cooperate. Right? And also here, Europe would have an opportunity to bring these parties together first and then have a common ways of doing things. Then other things we should do in Europe. If Europe wants to lead, it means you need to be first. And if you go back to, for example, LTE, so Korea became the country of LTE. And how did they do that? They were good in research, but we are also. And, and Europe is investing a lot in research. I think we are doing well. But on top of that, they did uh, something else. They set very concrete milestones of how and when to build 4G networks. And I think here is something that Europe and policy should take a look at. Because we can say we want to pull in the verticals, we want to create a different ecosystem, but if there is no 5G network, of course it's not going to happen, right? Nobody's going to invest if there is no clear time plan when 5G will be available. And I think here um, we need to think how we can do that. So from our point of view, we simply set milestones, right? We say in 2017, we create a first version of 5G to address a certain use case. Maybe it's bring high-speed connectivity <coughs> where 5G is the final hop into rural areas. Then we go ahead, right? 2018, we pick a major event and we put 5G there and so on. And similarly, we also think that, uh, that Europe could help us to test how efficient is 5G, for example, by using it in the public sector. Right? So if we deploy 5G in the public sector, you know, how much can we do and develop around that to increase the efficiency? And again, I think we should start early. Because the only way that Europe can become more competitive is that you do this faster than other countries. So if we are simply a follower, that's fine, you know, but then Europe will not take, take a lead. So things we see, so we start with 5G in 17 ahead of standards. That would automatically mean we need to do something with spectrum much faster than is the current plan. Uh, we think um, we need to make the investment climate a bit more friendly. So again, coming back to spectrum, um, you know, you need to have an early insight on what spectrum you can get. Um, you need to look at if you invest, how long can you keep the license? Our feeling is that maybe licenses should go to 25 years instead of what it is today. Because building 5G will be a fairly costly um, affair. So, so we need to you know, give the investors the view that they will be able to get the return on their investment. What else? We also think that um, um, there could be a little bit less regulatory involvement in the industry itself. Um, so let the companies do some consolidation. 
um, consolidation will free up some kind of efficiency dividend, and that efficiency dividend could then be used by the industry to invest. Um, the money has to come from somewhere. So some relaxation in that area, we believe, would be very welcome. Um, we also think that um, um, we should be able um, to um, have a political commitment, as I said earlier, for the rollout itself. Um, I don't know how you guys can do that, but uh, we do think that you should give it an attempt to try to um, set milestones that 5G will be built and that industry will follow. Then, as I said earlier, I think um, on the um, putting 5G at the heart of the ecosystems and the vertical sectors, we hope Europe will play a role of bringing those parties together. Uh, we have 5G uh, PPP, which invests 700 million in the next five years, and we have also the, um, of course, private sector doing their share. But we have a feeling that part of that money could be used not only to develop the 5G technology by itself, but also to bring 5G into those verticals, to use some of that money to look more into the application side. What else is there? Um, I think finally, um, I think, um, as I said earlier, so there's only one way that you can lead, and that is that you start early, that you start first, that you trial, uh, that you experiment, and when you succeed, you know, that's the time when uh, you are then have a possibility to, to take out your findings to the rest of the world and create some more economic incentive for, for our industry. All right, so those were the main things I want to share. Um, I, not entirely familiar with uh, how events like this work, but I hope we have a good debate and discussion, uh, you know, that you bring up any concerns you have or ideas. And uh, yeah, let's talk more later. <laughs>